the working environment, the systems of work, um, job design, work organisation, they're really seen as the fundamental root causes of bullying. So bullying shows up in terms of um, various behaviours between people. So it, it looks like a behavioural problem. But what we know is that these behaviours are enabled and made possible um, by these, you know, deeper structures, um, just everyday ways of working, um, different aspects of job design, different aspects of leadership really, you know, say whether bullying is possible or not. Um, and, yeah, and whether it's rewarding to actually, you know, to, to, to do bullying. So for me, I think about you need some enabling conditions that make it possible and you need some motivating factors that make it attractive to, to like so having low costs, for example, or strategically positioning yourself might be a motivator. But the enabling conditions are really um, more to the point of your question, the risk factors. So what we know is in unhealthy working systems, in high stress working systems, they really are, um, you know, where the risk factors for bullying are found. When job demands are really high, um, such as workloads, uh, but also demands like um, lack of role clarity. So just having really unclear boundaries around your role and your scope of work. Um, having a lot of demands around bureaucracy and, and red tape. Um, when those things increase, the likelihood of bullying increases too. And having low, what we call job resources. So that might be the tangible resources you need to do your work, computers and equipment and people and budget and time. Um, or it might be what we call psychological resources like job control and social support. So the, to the extent that you don't have those things, um, the likelihood of bullying increases so it's kind of like they create a bit of a melting pot um, in a stressful system that eventually shows up um, in terms of these you know conflicts and interactions that can become bullying in my work in particular I focused on what I call work organization practices so how are we bringing people and tasks um, together how are we structuring things through rosters and schedules, um, through allocating tasks and workload, through providing the right kind of training and career progression? And how do we manage the performance of staff and appraise it and reward it and manage their underperformance? And do we just have a really safe climate around mental health and a safe, physically safe working environment? I've kind of focused on, on those things um, because they're things that we can change if we understand how rosters and scheduling might be used in the bullying process or her around um, allocating tasks and so on, we can actually unpack that and we can address it and we can concrete changes. So, so going back to what we were saying before, trying to get some more con concreteness, trying to get some clearer practical options for how we might address those risk factors.